Hello, welcome to the conference. Today on the conference is the issue of the national dialogue recently called by our president. You recall that not long ago, there was a call for sovereign national conference by many prominent Nigerians. This was opposed by a section of Nigerians who said that their conference should not be imbued with the quality of sovereignty, which is a condition of independent authority over a given geographic territory, say Nigeria. It looks like the president's call for national conference meets that criteria. But today, there are still those who said that that call is a little tricky because it is diversionary, they say, and because it may be a strategic plan for 2015. Others say that our country today has itself in an atmosphere of distrust and violence and therefore we actually need, as the president thought, to come together and talk with each other. That's the issue on the conference today and we'll be right back. Don't go away. Objective analysis. These are the kinds of things we should be talking about. If you don't invest in that system, you are actually working to undermine the entire society. Informed opinions. To compete and win in a democracy, you need education. Democracy and good governance can be viewed as two sides of the same coin. Dissecting views. Without good governance, you won't attract the investments to develop. Strategic discussions. If you don't have a strategy about how to use that money, that money will actually worsen the problem. Good governance breeds a stable democracy, and a stable democracy ensures tangible development. The Kenyan Amani Center upholds this, and so institutes a strategic plan and systemic implementation formula for ideal governance ordinances. Come with me and find out more. Here we uphold high standards of governance to ensure sustainability. These we achieve through programs for executive leaders and youth. We partner with great supporters of good governance and development like the Ford Foundation, the National Democratic Institute, the National Endowment for Democracy, MTN, CETRACO, and our own Federal Ministry of Education. Be a part of this tremendous move towards stability. Get involved in our programs. Ken Namani Center, the machinery of democracy stability in Nigeria and Africa. Welcome back. Today we are discussing the national conference recently called by the president. And with me today on the conference are very patriotic Nigerians, those who are very knowledgeable to discuss this important issue. On my immediate left is Mr. Moribo Kau, who works as chairman and CEO of multimedia company of World Sound and Vision Multimedia Limited in Abuja. He's also chairman and editorial of the editorial board of Blueprint newspaper. He writes a weekly column for Blueprint and for Vanguard newspapers. On his immediate left is Honorable Yusuf Maitama Tuga, oil and gas consultant and former member of our House of Representatives, where he was chairman and committee of the Committee on Public Procurement. In 2011, he was the CPC governor for Bauchi State. Welcome to the conference. Pleasure to be here. On his immediate left is our regular, Ezenwa Mwagu, who was president of the Nigerian chapter of transparency and a passionate advocate of human rights and good governance. He is currently chairman of the Partners for Electoral Reform. Welcome again. Thank you. So on the conference today, we begin with this question. What do you think the Nigerians are looking 
for in this dialogue that's been called by the president? Well, I'm, I'm happy you said the president called a national uh, dialogue. Essentially, I think that a lot of contradictions have built up in Nigeria over the last uh, couple of years. And the whole idea is to give a platform for Nigerians from different backgrounds to be able to filter their opinions about what exactly have been the, the crisis points and the, the, the major contradictions that face the Nigerian polity. So I think it's all about getting Nigerians to come together and to, to interrogate the various problems facing the Nigerian society. But the problem is not that Nigerians want to come together. There's been a lot of discussion and controversy about the, the method of holding that kind of discussion as you introduced. Some people have argued for a sovereign national conference. Others say it's practically impossible, given that you still have state structures that are functional in Nigeria. Yet others uh, argue about the modalities of getting people to come together for a conference. Some talk about ethnic-based uh, uh, criteria for organizing these, yet other people uh, disagree. So it, it's a whole lot of issues that need to be uh, examined and properly articulated for us to be able to organize a conference as, as the president wants us to do. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, Yusuf, uh, do you think this conference should be ethnic-based, the process of selection of people? I don't think it should be because uh, Nigeria is, is not constituted of ethnic nationalities that own land. The land does not belong to ethnic nationalities. The constitution as it stands right now does not vest ownership of land, ownership of a territory uh, referred to as Nigeria in the hands of ethnic nationalities. So you cannot say you want to have a conference of ethnic nationalities. Quite okay, you know, there are valid reasons for having a conference. Uh, the system of government we're operating, or government as it stands right now, you know, could do with a bit of tweaking. Um, you can look at issues such as, you know, do we revert to a parliamentary system? But when I say parliamentary system, we've tried it in the past. So we're not... Um, necessarily looking at a bicephalous uh, parliamentary system where you have a ceremonial head of state. Um, we can reduce the size of government because clearly we can't afford ourselves anymore. So there's no harm in looking at uh, a unicameral legislature, a parliamentary system with a prime minister where everybody is in the same chamber, uh, ministers, the prime minister, representatives, you thrash things out. Well, you know, uh, you know, Yusuf's point is basically about reducing the size of government. And that is very important. We know that this is weighing this country down. Not too long ago, the governor of the central bank made this particular case about reducing the size of government. Is it one of the things you would consider to be on the table at dialogue? As and well, well I, I think the first, the first thing is the assumption. We are proceeding on the assumption that Nigerians want a conference. But the president thinks so, uh, says he wants a dialogue, s decides to set up a committee that should uh, find out from Nigerians whether they want a conference. We've not got that report yet. So to even proceed from, to, mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. the assumption that Nigerians already want a conference is, is uh, for me, preposterous. And I think we should be a little cautious in the way mm -hmm. we proceed, because the, we already going ahead as if there's a conference, at a conference uh, as if we have been presented with a fait accompli. And I think we need to deal with that. So well, but do having, you think having, there's a need for that? Having, having said that, yes. I will proceed from, from first the premise that, look, why is, the, why is there a resurgence of the call for conference? Why, why, why is it that we now want to talk? We used in uh, uh, post-military era, the whole idea about, I mean, pre-military uh, era, the whole idea about this sovereign national conference was one of the ways that we thought we were able to, to, to get the military to, to step out. Look, because sovereignty vested in a few people, the people who had no input into governance under the military. So the, so the call for a sovereign national conference was strong and tough. It was defeated. The military ensured that it didn't happen. So we transited to civil rule. 
Now the whole idea is that 13 years down the line, we thought that civil rule will have been able to address some of the issues that that led to the call. Perceived marginalization, you know, insurgency, I mean, violence, and all of that that has characterized our polity. So first, we must admit that the resurgence of the call for a national conference is first and foremost a failure of civil rule to address those challenges. So having compounded the problem, Nigerians are feeling that, look, perhaps this government has no response to the challenges that we face and our fears. But, we can then talk. But, so so do I agree that we, there is a need for us to talk? Yes, but yes. we must then situate it correctly to be able to, to make headway. Okay, so there's a need to talk, but it says it is not all agreed to and we should not jump before we hear from the committee that the president has set up. But the need to talk, whether to get Nigerians together on the basis of ethnicity or on the basis of any other criteria, is there a need to talk to resolve the problems that we find ourselves in here today? As I said at the introduction, the problems of distrust and violence. Well, um, on the issue of the need to talk, the best way to decide whether we need to talk or not is to have a referendum. And the way our uh, uh, constitu constitution stands right now, there's no room for such a referendum. So I think maybe the starting point would be to have a referendum. I meant the, uh, the, the constitution as it is right now for Nigerians to decide. If you want to make it truly democratic, that is. But it seems we're already on autopilot. Um, an article that was written by uh, Professor Ben Wambweze yes. in, uh, was it August or thereabouts, the North-South Divide, clearly shows that, uh, you know, he's made up his mind that uh, the way forward for Nigeria is to um, break up the unity that Northern Nigeria has. Even though he contradicts himself uh, in the very same essay, on the one hand, he's saying, you know, the problem is the unity of northern, of northern Nigeria. On the other, he's saying, well, they're not really that united anyway. So he can't seem to make up his mind. And then what is, you know, creating an ambience of suspicion about the whole national dialogue issue? What has compounded matters even further is the fact that this same Professor Ben Mwabweze is saying he single-handedly single uh, wants to draft a, 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 the, the constitution that will be tabled before the national conference. Now, if you look back at uh, the 1977, or should I say 1979 constitution, the constitution drafting committee, committee consisted of about 49 people, yes. chaired by Chief Rotimi Williams. Williams yes. And now here you have just one single individual who has already indicated, you know, his bias in, in the very same exercise. And, you know, you can see that, you know, is uh, not objective when it comes to, he has very strong sentiments about, you know, certain sections of Nigeria. And that he is claiming now that he wants to draft it and present it. Well, Yusuf, Yusuf's point is quite clear on the article written by Professor Mwabweze. But surely Professor Mwabweze is not single-handedly driving this talk, this call for He is not, but conference. you look at the choice of the president, the, 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 the members of the committee. Mm. You had uh, the pres <coughs> Professor Ben Mwabweze was nominated. Colonel Inyam, who lived in northern Nigeria, lived in Kaduna, went to NDA, but, you know, refused to even learn the language, Hausa, because of the, the disdain he has for northerners, was nominated also. But it's been you, kicked you out. You saw the outcome. It's been kicked out, yeah. But, okay, look, Modibo, on this issue, yeah. on this issue of Professor Mwabweza's article, I'm sure you've read it. Yeah, I did. And um, we should just take it out of the table. No, I, I think I think there's a more fundamental issue. It's that from the period of military rule, there has been, let me use the word uh, decidedly, an oligarchy based in the southern part of Nigeria that has made uh, a career out of uh, uh, agitation for a sovereign national conference. They have a very strong platform in the media. And uh, in recent times, they have been grouped in the Patriots, and they have a lot of people around the Lagos area. These have been the people who have continuously agitated. Of course, Professor Wabo is, is one of them. Now, the argument they've always posited is that they wanted 
ethnic communities to come together to discuss the problems facing Nigeria. And the counter argument has always been that Nigeria is not only a sum total of ethnic groups. Uh, the identities of, of the Nigerian people have continued to, to, to shift. And um, those who, who have this ossified perspective about ethnic groups coming together miss a lot of the nuances about the issues facing the Nigerian people. I have argued several that if you do a demographic analysis of Nigeria today, you have a situation where 75% of the population is under the age of 35. 45% of the population is under the age of, of 15. You have a situation where 44 million young people don't have a job. A this, voice. Or, or a voice. And for them, the issues facing them are not the contradictions of ethnicity, but they need jobs, they don't have good skills, education is in crisis. So these are more fundamental issues, I think. And these problems are located in the, in the political economy. They are related uh, to issues of governance or bad governance. And these are more fundamental and central issues facing the Nigerian people, I think, than I, I think, issues about ethnicity. I think you are absolutely correct yeah. that those things are very, very fundamental. Mm -hmm. But as a, I want you to take this from that point. The issue of shifting identities exists and we know this to be true in social sciences and this to be true in the case of Nigeria in particular. But should we now think that there may be a different way of organizing participation without basing it on ethnicity? Yeah, I think what has defeated the Nigerian ruling elite is their inability to build a modern state. Yeah. And because they also don't understand what constitutes a modern state, there is no country that is moving forward around these considerations. The people are going to the moon, people are doing e e extraordinary things. And then we are busy talking about the Gede, the Doma, the Bodhi. These are, these are things that by, by the time the 20th, 20th century idea has been brought to the 21st century. And I think those who can verse those things need to take a little step backwards. Okay. <laughs> you, you know. So we, we need to, what do we need to do? We need to push our country to modernity. We need to begin to look at those things that can elevate us as a people. And what are those things? Is it, uh, um, uh, Modibo talked about it. Those things are the things where you create, you, you, you improve the well-being of, of your people. You improve the quality of citizenship. The, what is this quality of citizenship? Somebody wants to be a citizen because he can get a job. He, the state is responsible to, to a large extent for his, for his welfare, irrespective of where he comes from. It's not as if these issues are not there. They, they are there. I, I, for one, have a background that transverses different the, the parts it's of the okay. different, yes, because I, I, I grew up in, in Zaria, I have schooled in Lagos, I'm Igbo, so I can understand sometimes some of the sentiments, but leadership, the, the place of leadership is to be able to, to push the people away from that and then bring them to the point where Excellent. they can begin to celebrate. Excellent, I think you make a very good point as always, but see, the point of this being that all these ethnicities live in these units and that all these ethnic groups and you capture them along the way. Well, the zones are six zones. It is a, it's an exercise in futility to talk about ethnic-based groups. They, a lot of those people who argue also can make a reference to the, to the constitutional conferences of the 1950s. Those conferences were attended by political forces. NPC yeah, was a political party. Uh, Action Group was a political party. NCNC. NCNC. Even smaller political parties. NAPO was relatively smaller. But these were political and social forces. Because a, a society, <coughs> because of the dynamism of society, what you have to take into consideration, uh, you, you, you talked about identities. And just before we started the, the recording, I, was, I told you I was sitting back just 24 hours ago and seeing the way my identity as a Nigerian has continued to shift from when I was born to this moment today. And this is the reality. And one more that is very fundamental. The, 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 the majority of the Nigerian people are moving away from the rural areas to the urban centers. So we're becoming a more and more urbanized community. At yes. any rate, yes. at yes. any rate, yes. if you're going to, if you say you want to hold Thank elections, you very much. Uh, in order to uh, decide- To the select issue, the participants. The, the of, yeah. Yeah. First and foremost, you have to uh, devise mechanisms or you know, put in place a system 
that would uh, bring an end to rigging elections in Nigeria? Because what guarantee do you have that the elections no, are not going to be rigged? At by the political level, parties. At the local government level, at, you know, we are uh, enforcing, uh, enforcing that. Uh, elections in Anambra, we've seen that. So no, you have to think of very <laughs> radical uh, ways of addressing this issue, perhaps looking at the Bangladeshi uh, model where the sitting president, you know, vacates his position and a retired uh, senior judge takes over, you know, for the period when elections are conducted and, and so so you have to start addressing those issues first before you and you see when uh, we give the impression that the failure of public institutions in Nigeria is because uh, of uh, these ethnic issues it is not so you go down to the ethnic community where you have a, 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 a mono ethnic um, structure society yes in place they're fighting each other there's corruption there and the system that okay. Democracy has its own basic rules, right? Mm. You cannot want to build a democracy and also want to uh, uh, influence democracy with institutions that by nature are very reactionary and anti-democratic. Like? If you have, for example, some of these ethnic-based organizations. Yeah, but we're, we're going to go away no, from I, ethnicity. I'm just, I'm just yes. giving this. So, no, okay, there, there, there is a continuous level of, of, of uh, conversation. You have parliaments at the federal level, at the state level, even local government levels. So you can argue that this there is a continuous... So Modibo, you're saying the, conf uh, the dialogue is unnecessary. No, I haven't said that. Uh, but that's what you're driving. No, I haven't said that. I'm okay. just saying, I'm just looking at the absurdity of some of these positions. Okay. And saying that on a prima facie level, you can say there is nothing wrong. There is the conversation going on in Nigeria. But as anyone has pointed out one basic thing, we are faced with the ruling elite that has not been able to, to, to consciously identify its role in history of modernizing the Nigerian state. And what is the nature and content of that state? These are fundamental issues. Yeah, can you put that on the table of discussion? We're I mean, that's a good point. Issues. It's one issue. I said the issues, this is a big plate of issues. Those are just some of it. But what I want to get from those who bring up the issues like you do, and Yusuf do too, uh, does also, I want, and you started with giving us. You see, yes. if, if you say, I don't want ethnic basis for selection, I agree with you. But the point is, what is your alternative? There are so and you were trying to give us an alternative, which yes, I thought I, was. I, I think we have to, like I said, go back to the issue of addressing free and fair elections. After that, then we can address this. Otherwise, if the president feels he is going to. Uh, randomly select people, not necessarily based on uh, so-called ethnic nationalities, but people that he feels are competent to discuss certain issues, to come to Abuja or wherever, to sit down, to dialogue, even if the only thing that dialogue achieves at the end of the day is addressing, you know, this revisionist uh, uh, approach to history, because people, there, there are people going about trying to rewrite Nigeria's history. So let us dialogue, yes. yes, bring it on, let us sit down and talk, but you know, let, let, let that representation uh, be, uh, consist of people that are not irredentists, that are not looking to, um, to bring about an end to, to Nigeria. And let it not just be a distraction because 2015 is in the horizon. Okay, but then if we had a conference, assuming we have a conference, um, what would be the value of that conference if it doesn't have the force of law? Well, the, the, the president is talking about a force of law by taking everything you have done. Any, any of this your discussion from what he said, he said he takes it back to the National Assembly. No, 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 no. So let's, you and see, you see, you see for, for, the, you, so, and there is a fund that for me, there's a fund. But that's killing it. The, 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 so is a, killing the, the place is, a, it can be the, just the be place is a burial ground. The, it's a burial ground of good laws. So you need to deal So with, can we go to a referendum? So it's important. It, the referendum part of it is... is but is, it's not constitutional. It, what have we not solved? We've solved the problem. We use doctrine of necessity to, to deal with uh, what is not in the constitution. So we can invent things. You see, the, to, to hide under legal, very legal, to, to, to not to do what is right. So is just suggest to me, what will you give as a way for us to be able to implement there is, referendum? There, there is something he said now, which is, which you can't run away from. Our inability 
to count ourselves according to Chido in Kalu. We can't we don't we are we can't even know we don't know how many we are. We can't count our, our elections are not our elections are not the best as you know. We have rigged even elections that we we are prepared, we are going to win. Issue of well I'm going to come back to you. We have been discussing the issue of the national conference recently called by our president. And at this point I'm going to ask my guests what is the way forward? Well, uh, if, if we agree that there must be a national conference, I think that uh, we should have a representation uh, based on the social forces of society. First of all, we're having a demography of young people, so there must be a good representation, for instance, of the trade union movement, of women's movement, youth, and uh, the unemployed, and the political parties, and maybe traditional institutions and forces in society. Uh, peripheral issues. Thank you very much, yeah. Maliba. And Yusuf? The way forward is we have to get uh, elections right. The Nigerians need to take back government from those in government because as it is right now, uh, there seems to be the social contract has been broken. Those in government are holding on to unearned income, unearned rents coming from oil. No need to tax the people. Therefore, don't ask any questions. So we need to take Nigeria back. Thank you very much, Yusuf. That would be a very good point to discuss the next conference. As anyway, what's your way forward? Way forward is that if you want to have a conference, even the redentists must come to the table <laughs> and be defeated if they have to. But do not have a yeah. conference in which you are already determined those who should participate in it. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Thank you very, very much, As anyway. And um, there you have it. Today we have uh, discussed the issue, and um, no matter what camp you belong to, we hope you have gained from today's discussion. See you next time on the conference. Thank you very much.